Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're gonna to talk about the problems with Battleship New Jersey's guns in 1983 and early 1984 while she was off the coast of Lebanon. Battleship New Jersey was the first of the four Iowa-class battleships reactivated. She was the first one in service since 1968. When she was reactivated, they had to pull back reservists and other former crew members from the ship's Vietnam and Korean commissionings to train the modern crew how to use the guns. These 16-inch guns are so different from anything else in the Navy, even in the 80s, much less in today's Navy, that, uh, that they had to bring back these former sailors to train the modern navies how to operate these old-style guns. Incidentally, this is a three-gun turret, not a triple-gun turret. That means each gun can elevate independently of the others. The combined rate of fire is over 18 rounds a minute. So that's one problem. You have a ton of sailors with experience, gunners mates who know what they're doing. However, they don't have experience on this particular weapon system because it hadn't been used in the Navy since 1968. So we're talking about close to 15 years. The chiefs who might have been in service back during Vietnam when this ship and the other uh, gun cruisers were still around, uh, would have been 15 years removed from that. So even if they had some experience, it was kind of old. So Battleship New Jersey is reactivated uh, right at the end of 1982. Secretary Lehman, I thank you. Captain Fogarty, the officers and members of the crew, surrounded by all this Navy blue and gold, I had a strange feeling that I'm back on the set filming Hellcats of the Navy. That was a picture that was based on a, a great victorious operation of the Navy in World War II in the Sea of Japan called Operation Hellcat. I remember at the time I was in love with my leading lady. She is Nancy, my wife, and I'm still in love with her. But I have to confess that today, I find myself developing a great respect for the leading lady in these ceremonies. She's gray, she's had her face lifted, but she's still in the prime of life, a gallant lady, the New Jersey. Beginning of 1983, she does her first deployment. This ship is very much a show the flag, uh, scare the Soviet Union sort of propaganda piece. There's very little time for actual training. Training is what we're gonna do when we come back from this cruise. Well, that Westpac cruise, the cruise to the Western Pacific, ended up diverting the ship to South America because there was a, a problem going on down there. Remember, this is the Reagan administration when the United States is getting involved all over the world and all sorts of things. And then before she can make it home, there are issues in Lebanon along uh, with the Lebanese Civil War. As part of this plan, the government of Lebanon has requested, and I have approved, the deployment of United States forces to Beirut as part of a multinational force. So Battleship New Jersey is sent overseas, just been brought back, all the kinks haven't been worked out, and there's uh, a, a relatively untrained crew on board at this time. So they go over to Lebanon and as a propaganda piece, this ship was hugely successful. Our allies loved her, our enemies feared her. When she shows up off of uh, Lebanon, Bill Curtis from the CBS Morning News says what's on this ship. Uh, says what's on this shirt. There is a new and awesome presence off the coast of Beirut this morning, the battleship New Jersey, with guns capable of flinging a Chevrolet 23 miles. So the crew absolutely loved this. When they got back to port, they printed into a shirt like this. This shirt is not the original one from our collection, or I wouldn't be wearing it. It is the very similar one that we sell in the ship's store. So if you want a replica of this kind of shirt that they would have worn on this ship, 
in the 1980s, you can get that. There's a link in the description below to uh, this in our store. It's also got the ship's hull number on the back in the correct font. So, hugely, hugely uh, influential when the ship gets there. It's all over the news. Everybody's excited for it. Uh, unfortunately, it is not enough to deter aggression and the uh, Marine Corps barracks there is bombed. Uh, at the time, uh, we, uh, we had quite a few Marines uh, stationed station there and uh, between the religious fractions, uh, there was a lot of uh, combat uh, occurring. I can remember when we first showed up uh, on station off the coast, uh, we had received uh, fire at the ship from from land artillery, batteries, but they didn't have the range to to hit the ship. You know, you could see the splashes and explosions in the water, but we just moved on out a little bit. And then... Uh, Did you return fire at all? Not at that time, sir. No. Um, then uh, we just remained on station for quite some time. Uh, there were some carriers in the area and they were doing some land strikes and, and whatnot. And then, uh, I guess it was uh, October 23rd. Well, let me back up a second. It was the evening of the 22nd. I was on watch up in uh, CEC, Combat Engagement Center. So uh, I guess it was about uh, 2300, which is 11 p.m. Uh, we had a request from, from shore from one of the Marine units saying that they needed a fire control radar technician to repair one of their tanks. And Master Chief uh, Gorjinski was in combat engagement center at the time and volunteered to go short. So I guess we went to flight quarters about midnight or shortly thereafter. Uh, Master Chief went ashore and uh, I had, uh, about that time, uh, I was due to get off watch. I went to bed and I guess it was about 6.30 the following morning. Uh, the general quarters alarm sounded jumped out of my rack and got up to CEC as soon as possible. And that's when we were informed that the barracks had been attacked. Uh, we didn't know the, uh, the condition of Master Chief Gorgensky, where he was, or anything. Uh, uh, and that's when things really started going downhill. Uh, A number of diplomatic approaches are attempted first. So Battleship New Jersey, even though she lost a crew member in the barracks bombing, even though her crew went ashore and helped uh, recover bodies and, and uh, take care of wounded and, and things like that after the bombing, she wasn't allowed to fire her guns. So at this point, Battleship New Jersey has been continuously cruising for months without being able to do any sort of additional training uh, or go back to port for maintenance. In fact, during this time period, it was discovered that the center barrel of turret two was cracked. It couldn't be used anymore. It seems like the ship was uh, put away in mothballs with a cracked uh, liner for the gun barrel, or possibly during some of the early refresher training in the 80s, it had cracked. So she essentially only has eight usable gun barrels and she hasn't been able to go back to port for maintenance. This barrel was eventually replaced. Center barrel turret two is the one that was fired the most during Vietnam because it was always the one they used to fire the first ranging shot, probably because it was more or less the center of the battery. So she's down a gun barrel. There's been no training. These guys are all relatively new. Early in 1984, diplomacy has failed. So Battleship New Jersey is finally given permission to fire her guns in anger. And she is able to do this successfully. Many of her shots destroy Syrian command and control positions uh, and, and other rebel positions, bunkers, things like that. But some other shots go well over their targets. And that is often attributed to an issue with the ship. Uh, in fact, I've even heard it said that Battleship New Jersey only had eight barrels for her entire 80s career. Again, that's not true. It's just during this first deployment before it's fixed during a major yard period. 
The real issue with accuracy during these early bombardments isn't that the crew wasn't trained, isn't that she's on eight barrels. It is the powder. The ships continued to use 1940s manufactured powder into the Gulf War into the 1990s. We had so much of it, they never bothered making more. The problem was when New Jersey was brought back, they had to go to these storehouses and figure out, does this stuff still work? Uh, so they opened a bunch of bags of powder and they got it mixed up. The powder bags, and there's a link to another video we did in the past uh, in the description below that talks about specifically how this powder is manufactured, like what, what is in there. But essentially it, it's more or less three inch grains of powder and uh, they're, they're stacked up like this in the bag. And then to make sure that each bag is 110 pounds, there's an extra layer on top called the tear layer because they're, they're nominally three inches by a half inch. But you know, there's some variance. So after they've got it loaded, they put it on the scale and then they drop if the normal uh, grains are like this. Then the other ones get dropped in like this on the top, just however much you need to get to that full weight. Well, the guys at the Ordnance Depot pull out these bags, they rip open the silk bags, they, they uh, start mixing up the powder. And so it's not stacked properly so that it burns the way it was designed to burn in the uh, 1940s. And because it is not burning properly, you're getting all sorts of variance in your velocity as the guns are fired. Later on in the 80s, the ship had velocimeters installed on each of the gun turrets. In 1983, she did not have those installed. So they couldn't tell what velocity the projectiles were leaving the guns at, so they couldn't adjust the computer for that. Uh, so many of her shots were inaccurate until she fired off all of this powder and they had to ship out more powder that hadn't been messed up. It was still in the original packaging and whatnot. As soon as she starts firing that, all of a sudden the shots are accurate. So not only has the crew now had experience firing, uh, but they're, they're getting the right kind of powder that's been mixed the, the right way. And suddenly they're, they're able to hit the target. Finally, New Jersey ends this deployment. And to this day, it is the longest deployment of any warship since World War II in the US Navy. So it, it's much longer than was ever intended just because she kept going from hotspot to hotspot. She didn't get the training period. She didn't get the yard periods. And they hadn't done all the proper training and testing with these guns. So uh, the ship goes back home and goes into the yard for about another year to correct all of these uh, post-commissioning issues that they discovered. So. That is why the battleship's guns were occasionally inaccurate in 1983, 1984, and how they were fixed. Remember, if you would like a uh, near replica of the types of shirts that the crew was able to buy in the ship store on the ship in the 1980s, we sell these in our store nowadays. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to get one. And don't forget, your sales in the ship store go directly towards supporting the museum's operations and our upcoming dry dock. So anything that you, you buy, it's gonna help us because you're, you're giving us money to continue to operate. It's gonna help us because you wear this, you're advertising for the ship. So we really appreciate your support. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching. That was crazy. Shaking the whole boat, the whole ship just shaking, just going, you know. And it, and it was a good feeling because we sat out there for quite a while and we shot once in a while here and there, the five inch guns too as well. But that was the day that, that we were shooting and it's like we sat out here for a while, let's do something, you know. It was like a waiting game, let's do something. And that was our, February was our day.